Welcome to Inside Hawaii Real Estate, a show dedicated to providing up-to-date information news to Hawaii home buyers, homeowners, and investors. I'm Will Tanaka. I'm your host, and today really excited to have a very special guest, Ke Kelly Lum. He's a franchise owner of Caring Transitions. But first, a little bit about Kelly. Uh, he's a graduate of Kamehameha Schools. He got a scholarship from University of San Francisco to play baseball. In fact, he was drafted by the Seattle Mariners. So awesome. He also has a master's and a doctorate of occupational therapy uh, from USC. So welcome, Kelly. Aloha. Nice to meet you all. All What's right. Up, <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, today, let, let's get into it because, you know, um, there's always an ever-changing need of the seniors, of the elderly generation. And, you know, you're the franchise owner of Caring uh, Transitions, which help seniors with decluttering, downsizing, cleaning, even relocation, and, and estate sales as well. So, I mean, it's, you know, a much needed um, company and service that you provide. So, you know, let, let's start off with, how, how did you get into this business? Well, I got into this business in the 90s, um, just helping families uh, move items and moving from one home to another home. And then when I went to college in San Francisco and at USC, I became a Mason. So we, we were helping um, the Dimole boys or the Rainbow Girls. It's a nonprofit organization, fundraise by collecting uh, people's garage sale items and then reselling them for scholarships. And then when I became a Shriner and a Hawaiian Civic Club member, a lot of the times, uh, a lot of kupuna were asked for donation, to help with their donations or items that when they're moving out of a care home, uh, where I did my master's program was at Luna Lilo Home, a lot of times they are limited in space. So they would ask if I can come and pick up some items and donate it to, you know, Salvation Army, um, Savers or, or Goodwill. But it's it's been from from the nineties till most recently. So you know, uh, from the statistics, uh, there were seventy six million people born between nineteen forty six and nineteen sixty four, meaning that there's eleven thousand baby boomers are hitting the retirement age every single day in the U S. And in Hawaii, I mean that you know, you know there's a significant portion of the Asian population. So. I think, you know, of course, you're always going to get family help, but it could get extremely overwhelming. And that's, you know, I think that's when they come to you, Kelly, for this type of help, right? Correct. So as living in Hawaii, we have the largest geriatric population in the, in the, in the country. So even though statist statistically, it shows the baby boomers have a certain percentage nationwide, Hawaii is a much higher percentage. People live longer here. Um, However, the, the hard part about it is most, most of the people that move to Hawaii, which aren't locals, their kids don't live here as well. So a lot of our clients are people that just flew in to retire in Hawaii, but when a, a spouse or a loved one passes away, they need to relocate to where their kids are back on the continental US. So, and they move into a 55 plus over community or with their kids and as you know, we live on an island. It's uh, it's really easy to accumulate a lot of a lot of stuff, but um, these things have meaning to people, and we help them sift through these memories and these items, things that uh, have limited space where they're going to move to, and we help them pack those items that make sense to ship back, and the rest we donate to other nonprofit communities. So when you go into someone's home, so someone gives you a call. Um, you know, my parents need help. You go to their house and it's really overwhelming. They still have cars that don't run. They have a lot of documents, paperwork, bank statements. They have Correct. Clothes. They might have um, maybe items of high value, maybe watches, jewelry. So, you, you know, how do you, what, what, what do you do? Um, so, so I'll take you through. Uh... Can you walk us through the process? Right, I'll walk you right through the process. So normally we get a call, it comes into the call center, and then they notify us um, the name of the family that need help, whether it came from a realtor or a estate planner or a lawyer. Um, we call the family, find out what their needs are, 
and we work around what what they need to get done. So most of the time, um, they have to move out because they're loving the you know they're either their dad or their mom passed away, so they need to move them back out of the um, back, and they either have to sell their properties or move them into a care home or whatnot. So what we do is we go there and we assess the situation, find out, you know, are they selling the house? What kind of time frame do we have? And we give them an estimate on the clean out. And to offset the costs, we also help them, you know, because some of the items, they donated it prior to us coming in and those items could have been used to offset the cost of the clean out or, or could have been auctioned off, whether it's on the carrying transition CT bids website or at um, an estate sale that we can, we can also um, have one for them at their home. But if they don't want people coming to their home, we can also sell their, um, their items at the Aloha Stadium swap meet. So once we figure out what their plan or what their needs are, we can determine um, our course of action on how we want to um, tackle the job and try to find a solution that best fits um, their time frame and their budget. You know, so you're almost like a complete solution, one-stop shop for any families that need, not just to sell or gentle removal, but even to sell some items of value and to right. actually donate to, you know, Goodwill or other types of, um, you know, nonprofits. Correct. So sometimes they have items that, you know, costume jury, sometimes they think, ah, it's just costume, but you don't know. Like some of the jury in there could be high-end costume jury, you know, Cartier, Chanel, I mean, some name brands. They could be 14, 18, 24 karat gold. I've had one um, one story where a lady used to work at Tiffany in San Francisco and she moved home. Her husband passed away and she needed to move into a senior, senior home and she didn't think she could afford it. But after we made her, um, we found out that she had costume jewelry. A lot of Tiffany she'd been grabbing over the years. We posted, you know, watches were going for four grand. Her necklaces were going for a couple thousand, 18 karat gold um, jewelry, um, even Ming's jewelry, Gump's jewelry, things that they didn't know. You know, you can get way more uh, per gram than selling it to a pawn shop for 20 bucks for 14K. You can get anywhere from 100 to $150 per gram for, you know, Ming's jewelry is like, they went out of business in the nineties. So a lot of the families that we work with have these, these, these are like the Tiffany and company of Hawaii um, families. They would pass down their Ming's dragon Phoenix bracelet to their loved ones or whatnot. But we find those gold, gold coins, um, silver coins, artwork, some houses that we've cleaned out. They didn't realize the painting on the wall was worth $10,000, even books. So what we try to advise families is to, Wait on donating items, you know, or or throwing them away. Let us go in and make a thorough assessment because we we also been working at the collector shows that they have every year at the Blaisdell, um, Eileen and Wayne show. So we have a very good idea of what things are are, are worth and 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 we just don't want to throw away money, you know. So you you, you know that brings like a good point because you're bringing up all these high end jewelry and watches and mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't really know you know some of the uh brand names that you mentioned um so I'm gonna just kind of ask you a point blank question when it regards to trust right because I think when it comes to these types of very personal belongings and personal items um <laughs> And, you know, we've kind of know each other more recently, and I feel like, you know, you're definitely someone that I could trust. But when it comes to your team members and someone going in, you know, for the first time, how do you build that trust? And how can any consumers trust you and your company? Well, being that most of our, our business is in Hawaii, people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. Um, Zig Ziglar would say that. But... Um, the reason is you need to show aloha, you need to show respect, and and then people will open up to you. And, you know, of course, growing up in Hawaii, it's not so much what college you went to, it's like what high school you went to. And they're trying to make that familial connections first to see, you know, maybe there's some kind of common bond that you, either a family friend or somewhere that, you know, they can make that connection and trust. And... 
And you, you kind of want to build that trust from the get-go because um, you figure there's other companies, other moving companies out there. And I don't want to talk too much about other, the other companies, but focus in on ours. A lot of times they will go in there and they aren't, you know, they're not familiar with things of value, things of sentimental value to the families. They will just go in, grab everything and chuck it, or they will sell it themselves without the families knowing that they're not going to see a penny from that. So I think the, the beauty of being, um, of building that trust is just being straightforward from the upfront, say, hey, there's going to be three things we're going to do. We're either going to donate your items, you can get the tax receipt. If you're going to sell your property, you can you know give that to your accountant or whatnot. Um, we're either going to dispose of your items or we're going to sell your items. And then when we sell your items, we work on a percentage. We inventory things of value. There, there's sometimes they, they don't know that they have something of value. They think it's not, you know, like old Aloha shirts. Um, I mean, I can go on forever. Um, one family that we worked with, there were loaded rain spooners, Aloha shirts, Kamehameha brand, Dukan, Moku, Aloha shirts in in Hawaii Kai. They donated half the inventory to Goodwill, but not knowing that those shirts you can still resell on the market anywhere between sixty to two hundred fifty dollars. Wow. So so there's there's a lot of value in, in clothing, in, even vintage uh clothing from the 70s, 80s. There's a huge market, um shoes as well as um you know we get comics, we get cards, baseball cards. You know, you think about what baby boomers collected back then yeah. and, you know, those things are worth, worth money. Sometimes uh, more, you know, you, you can get more of the, the items that they're willing to throw away that would easily cover whatever um, cost of moving the items from Hawaii to the continental U.S. or the cost of the clean out. Um, so building that trust from the beginning and then also letting them know that, you know, that we value their items and and we we tell them the three things that we're going to do with it donate dispose of or sell um it, it it really helps and we close maybe nine out of ten of the deals because of that um by being straight up with the with the families from the front from the from the get-go yeah yeah and actually from um our experience you know with you just dealing with uh one of the properties, um, you know, you were referred from one of my real estate colleagues and, you know, referrals are always one of the best ways to uh, work right. with And right. from the people, yeah, I mean, you were very straight up. We could sell certain things, donate, you know, most of the clothes and then, you know, dispose of the, the rest. And, and then you even mentioned, you know, when it comes to the uh, documents, you know, there's a lot of uh, statements and uh, personal uh, documents lying around. So mm -hmm. you mentioned that you actually shred those documents. Is is that right? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of times, um, realtors or lawyers will ask us if they have titles for the vehicles, if they have, um, if I can find a will, or um, families are asking, you know, maybe uh, anything, family photos, um, things that birth certificates, and and. You know, certain items we try and look for, um, for for the families. But most of the time, these are personal documents, uh, bank statements, things of that sort. So we would shred them and properly dispose of them, um, as opposed to just throwing it in a rubbish can where somebody can look and then steal your identity, and and do something fraudulent. We make sure that um, everything is disposed of, and and we make sure that the families feel comfortable knowing that you know we are doing everything we can to make sure that we protect their identity as well as make sure that we get the, the belongings that they want back, you know, either jury, you know, um, you know, there's times where, for example, we would find a Bible. They, they didn't know the combination to the safe. I'll find the Bible. There's numbers in there. We'll open up the safe. The family's crying because they have all the mom's jury and things of that sort in there. So it makes us feel good knowing that, um, these families are able to retrieve and get back um, things that will help them in that bereavement process, you know, because a lot of times when we get called, they're on a time frame in Hawaii because rent still got to get paid, the mortgage still got to get paid. And um, these families really haven't gone through the the bereavement process or setting up the funerals or, or, or for their loved ones and whatnot. So um, we try and come there, come in, we, we come in and try and make it as, as smooth and as comfortable for them. And, 
And a lot of times they're, they're very happy because it's a huge weight comes off of their shoulders knowing that um, the house is cleaned out. They can, you know, the realtors can hire the contractors, put it on the market, stage the house. And um, it's, it's overwhelming if you don't um, know what you're doing. And if you, you know, when you come in and someone's passed away, you've got years of memories. You always have a, a family member that's really emotionally attached to items. Some just want to sell the property, but we, we work with both, um, both members to make sure that um, we're all on the same page and in making this transaction as smooth as possible for them. Yeah, because I, I think, you know, what you said is right on point about giving, you know, even myself um, a peace of mind that you will handle it the right way. And especially when you're shredding confidential or personal documents um, that the families, you know, may no longer need. I thought mm -hmm. that was next level because as a former attorney now, you know, representing uh, real estate clients, it's, um, I mm -hmm. think that's vital trust and, you know, confidentiality to make sure that it doesn't go, you know, outside the home. Correct. And, you know, have you had situations where, you know, someone passes away, the family members call you, but then some other family members still have access to the home. And yes. where, yeah, so, so how do you deal with that type of situation where, I mean, I've seen, unfortunately, seen things when someone passes away and there's homes and valuable items involved and, you know, people kind of go outside of their normal <laughs> self. <laughs> Uh, right. Um, how do you fact, think about, yeah, those situations when, you know, they're, they're trying to, I guess, so-called take, you know, some of the items be before you guys are able to get in there. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard because, um, for example, this past month, um, we had two separate families. Um, one was a family member who would not leave the house and the mom stayed on the property. Um, because until that daughter who's in her, you know, say in her 50s, was able to find another place, um, her husband wouldn't come around. As soon as that mom moved out, they're at that house trying to ransack and take things that they could use to pay for their own items. So what we do at the realtor um, is we make sure, number one, we change all the locks. Because our, you know, our, our job is for helping the mom and getting the items um, sold because she could use the money to go into um, a 55 plus over community. But it's hard because um, when you do it family, there's a lot of times where either a, a spouse, I mean, a spouse, but a, you know, a daughter or son still are connected and they need the money for some reason, whether it is to support drugs or, or whatnot. But we we try and make sure that we secure the the home first, and make sure that the um, our client is is aware that these things will happen. And then sure enough, when after we let them know, you know, they uh, the the daughter and her husband would, would come back to the house this past this past month. Actually, another instance would would be um, I'm not saying all realtors that, but sometimes when we do a clean out, our family or neighbors know that we're doing a clean out. They try to go in the house and try and grab whatever they want as well, not knowing that we work with the family members in saying, hey, we're going to sell this, 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 and that. And then when we get in there, um, sometimes we'll say, save for, I won't, I won't name any realtors, I won't name any neighbors, but they'll come in and take items knowing that um, they're going to sell the house or they're going through the bereavement process or the loss of a husband or spouse that, you know, they're going to borrow an item. You know why notorious for borrowing items and not returning right so um <laughs> in fact, yesterday we did a job with a neighbor borrowed uh um three weeks ago a lawnmower and then when the homeowner wanted it back they were actually selling it at a garage sale she showed me the sign that they were trying to sell it for 50 bucks and i'm like so part of our job is you know you're gonna have all these um aqua birds or you're gonna have all these um Alamihi crabs, you know, trying to yeah. you know, you take advantage of the situation. And it's 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 sad, but I think it, it happens all, all, all over the world, probably. So what we try to do is make sure that we um, protect the valuables, things that we know we can make the client um, the money back. And we'll either take it out, put it in storage after we inventory everything. And we'll, we'll post it on ctbids.com or sell it at um, 
having an estate sale outside of the the home because like it's like you have family members coming over and say hey that's mine and this and that or um they said that i could have that after dad said i could have this after he passed away you know this there's, there's a lot of different um scenarios that we go through but um the main thing is making sure that we protect the client's inventory and you know getting them the money that they need to to move on with their life whether they're moving to like a care home or a 55 plus over community or paying for the items to be shipped over to the continental us um yeah and, that, and so forth but yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that we see that you know sometimes i want to you know i don't have hair so i can't pull my hair out but at the same time <laughs> but it's just making sure that um the family feels safe and knowing that their belongings are safe with us but yeah, yeah it's it's hard but we we, we make do we, we we have a system where we end up taking up like the coins things of that value and there's other times where we will show they will ask us oh what are what are some things that are valuable that we can you know that that you know we can um sell and then of course you point out certain items and then another family member ends up oh, okay those are the items we want to keep <laughs> so most times um it's, it's a fine balance you got to kind of feel, feel the the families out and, and what are the intentions of your client and maybe the siblings of the client or their or the yeah. kids see if they're there really to help the mom out or dad out or they're there to just cherry pick things so that they can spend money on on whatever else that they want you know that has mm -hmm. nothing to do with helping their parents out or grandparents <laughs> no it, it's definitely always an adventure something you know you always learn something new and in terms of your services, is there something that you guys will not do? For example, um, like if there's there are like cars that's not running, or you know, let, let, let's start with that. How about cars? Like whether okay. they're running or not running, um, you know, is is that do you guys handle that yourself? Yes, we handle cars. So um, maybe uh, four out of five houses um, we have to do it. You know, everybody in Hawaii has a collectible car or something that when they move, there's like two or three cars in one household. So what we do is we um we work with Kinney Foundation. We either donate the cars if there's no titles or um we scrap the cars out. Um and if there are titles that we can resell the cars, um we work with the realtor or the lawyer to make sure that they can get the proper paperwork so we can put it up for auction. And once it's up for auction, um, then we can transfer title to the after payment, of course, to the new, um, the new um, car buyer or truck buyer. Motorcycles. I mean, the house that we were currently working on has a Corvette, Harley, and a Rubicon Jeep. And in the house prior to that, we have a Toyota Flareside black truck and another another Harley. Um, so there's a lot of vintage cars that we also find um in there that need to be put on the market because um we try every which way to make sure that we can we can make money for our clients so that they can use that money because funerary expenses and traveling and shipping items as well as you know doing the clean out it can get very costly so wherever we can pull that penny out to help the client offset the costs and most times they don't have money until escrow we understand that or um they have to go through probate or whatnot so a lot of times they don't have that upfront cost, but we work around with the families um, and the realtors as well to wow. make sure that we can, uh, help that family out. No, I, I, I think that's uh, very, very honorable of you and your company. And so is there something that you guys don't handle? Or is, is that on a case-by-case -case basis or do you um, anything in the house? Oh, bed bugs! Now, just <laughs> but no, we do <laughs> no pest control. No, we, we've seen it all: R rats, bed bugs, cockroaches. We can do it all. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't turned down any job that I know I could not handle. I mean, um, like I said, we have partnerships with other um, with other cleaners, with other. Um, um, businesses or nonprofits that will help us um, make sure that we can get the job done. If there's a task that we can't do, we, we, we partner with others, like I said, to help us, um, 
you know, in big jobs, um, whether it's dumping of um, chemicals, we make sure that we go through the correct process because a lot of times they have extra paint, oil um, in the garage. Um, and then I guess the maybe one, if there's black mold in the house, maybe we would have to go through because we can't expose our workers to, um, you know, black mold or what. So we would have to call outside um, help to make sure that the house is safe for us to, to clean. But majority of the time we help with, we, we pretty much do do everything. I mean, okay. we work with guns, yeah. bullets. Um, we found grenades, you know, things from Vietnam War. We work with the yeah. authorities to make sure that everything is uh, properly disposed of. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. You, well, <laughs> you guys are a true one-stop, complete solution, you know, caring <laughs> transitions, uh, relocation, decluttering, clean outs, you know, the state sales. And I, I, I think, um, you know, that's, that's fantastic. And, you know, as we're winding down, I mean, time flies so, you know, so fast. Um, is there any last message that you would want to share with our viewers about yourself, about the company? Um, anything you want to share? Um, yes. Yeah, so um, I guess when dealing with companies, if you do, the um, majority of the time is the loss of a spouse or a loved one. Or maybe um, the cost of living, people are getting like, what's the term, EM Tongi getting priced out of paradise. So people have to move, um, you know, not just baby boomers, but younger generations as well. Um, just make sure that uh, you try and maximize, you know, you work hard for your money. And, and the reason why you're either moving away or, or for one reason or another is, is because the cost of living is high. And you want to make sure you get a reputable um, company that will help you. Um, with that transition and caring transitions is the number one company um, right now in in the country as well as in in Hawaii because we have um, we don't just clean up the house but we also help um, you sell your wares or your valuables to make sure that you can um, you know get that extra money to help you with that move. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Kelly Lam, franchise owner of Caring Transitions, you were fantastic. And, you know, I'm so glad to be working with you on one of the homes right now for one of our clients uh, where the uh, spouse passed away. And yeah, no, I, I think you really bring value and trust um, to our clients. So thank you so very much, Kelly. Okay. Mahalo, Will. Thanks, thanks for having me on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Right. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.